Anyone who wonders if treaties are still relevant need only to look at recent events to see how and why they can affect us to this day. We saw a vivid example just last week in KI. The First Nation community in, in Ontario, Northern Ontario. Six members of KI, including Chief Donnie Morris and his deputy chief, were sentenced to six months in jail for trying to prohibit or prevent Platinex, a mining exploration company, from drilling in their traditional territory. They were protecting their ancestral lands against unauthorized development, and they were sentenced to jail. This is a shameful and serious matter. And last week, I traveled together with Grand Chief Stan Beardy and Deputy Grand Chief Elvin Fiddler to visit Chief Morris and his council in jail in Thunder Bay. We had a very good visit. We were very encouraged with the determination of Chief Morris and his council to stand their ground. Theirs is a simple matter, at least in their eyes. They believe that they have a right to say no to development. Indeed, this is a right that all First Nations have in every part of the country. This is our right. And quite clearly, this is a case, a very clear case, where the federal and provincial governments failed to meet their legal duty to consult and accommodate First Nations interests prior to approving projects that significantly affect the lands and the livelihood of First Nation citizens. Yet these same governments will protect private financial interests by jailing our people who defend their right. A similar jail sentence was just handed down in a case involving the Algonquin First Nations communities near Sharbot Lake, Ontario. These decisions ignore the duty of governments to engage with our people, and further, they criminalize legitimate dissent. That reflects a lack of understanding, or worse, contempt for Aboriginal rights and Canadian law. Yes, we all know that the law must prevail. And the highest law in this land says that governments must, must deal with our peoples openly, honestly, and fairly when it comes to our traditional territories. It's interesting to note that just a few weeks ago, Chief Donnie Morris had expressed a keen interest in taking part in this gathering. It was clear then, and even more clear now, that he is a strong advocate for our treaties. He is willing to put himself on the line to ensure that the treaties are respected and protected. By the way, I should point out that of the council members that were sentenced to this harsh, unfair sentence, one is a grandmother of seven, seven grandchildren. When we went to visit her, because we had been instructed by Chief Morris and his council to ask her to purge the contempt, she said no. She, as well as the other members, said the only way that they would seek leave to appeal this sentence if the contempt was set aside, that there would be no conditions that caused their sentence to be enforced or imposed. And we all recognize that the decision to seek leave, of seek leave to appeal is a matter that rests with Chief Morris's counsel and their legal counsel. 
We asked them for their permission to speak to their legal counsel <coughs> to see if there's any way that we might be able to assist and support them. And so those discussions have, uh, have taken place. We have yet to, uh, we haven't been informed as of this morning as to what the outcome of those decisions are. But clearly, Chief Morris and his counsel will not move away from their position. This was a case, or not a case, but this was a matter that was so badly managed right from the start. By the mining exploration company, Platinex, that choose to ignore the rights and interests of KI to those traditional lands. A provincial government, the province of Ontario, that issued the permit to the exploration company to proceed to the lands to begin drilling, relying on an archaic piece of provincial legislation that's 135 years old, that's based on free entry, an archaic, antiquated piece of provincial legislation. And both of these interests completely ignored and dismissed the rights and interests of KI. And as I said, in this case, they said no. And we support that decision. But they made it very clear to us that KI is not opposed to development. They're opposed to this development. They're opposed to this one. But they're not opposed to development. As a general statement, provided it respects and honors their, their rights and interests. They also support, and this was a very generous statement on the part of Chief Morris, knowing that he's, he's behind bars, that they support the right of other First Nations to undertake development of their choosing. And I say this knowing that a good number of our communities and our citizens are involved in mining in various shapes and forms. Over 50% of the First Nation communities in Northern Ontario are involved in mining and exploration. And we have to respect all of us, the rights and interests of those people, including the right to engage in development of their choosing. That's so very, very important to note. Five minutes. Thank you. And I make fi one final point on this issue. There's been no national resolution or statement on this issue. But I have no doubt that the chiefs present here, the nations that are represented in this important and, and uh, historic gathering, will join me when I say to Chief Morris and his council and his community, we support you in your struggle and we will stand with you always in your struggle.